Woman in the Dunes is a masterpiece of sand and skin, from sliding streams and insurmountable cliffs of sand to individual grains. Bodies that are clung to, worshipped and examined down to the pores in simultaneous eroticism and torturous irritation. Sand and skin combine and embody the very material of the film itself. The grey grains and grey texture of skin indistinguishable from the layer of film grain. Even the dunes and the sky are almost inextricable, the horizon line oftentimes dividing a mirror image. The film is, of course, one of a series of collaborations between Hiroshi Teshigahara and Kobe Abe. Whilst it presents a generally extremely loyal rendition of Abe's somewhat short novel, the effect of Teshigahara's visionary rendition is so superlative that it gives the work defining qualities that comparatively feel underwhelming when going back to the book. Although the novel is slightly more specific and naturally more descriptive when it comes to the existential nature of the plight of the trapped entomologist by way of access to his interior thoughts, Teshi Kahara's adaptation brings the material physical reality into greater relief, leveraging film's natural verisimilitude to further emphasise the original story's elliptical surreality. For instance, the alien landscape of the film is malignant, oppressive and even seemingly endless. It is all we see from the opening frames, whereas the novel surprisingly begins with the entomologist's journey from the city slowly making his way out into the increasingly barren landscape, rather than the immediate shock of an all-devouring, antagonistic ecosystem. Even when he gets to the dunes, they are not given anything like the kind of awe-inspiring and dread-inducing introduction of the film's opening montage. The side of the dunes that faced the sea and received the monsoon winds rose abruptly, but straggling clumps of scrub grass grew in places where the incline was not as steep. The village, resembling the cross-section of a beehive, lay sprawled over the dunes, or rather the dunes lay sprawled over the village. Either way, it was a disturbing and unsettling landscape, but it was enough that he had reached his destination, the dunes. The novel is more reflective of the entomologist's perspective. His initial arrogance and ignorance as to the threat posed by both the sand and the local villagers is echoed to an extent in the third-person prose, even when establishing the bizarre locale of the story. Reflecting the character's slightly naive or blasé attitude has the effect of diminishing the striking nature of Abe's extremely unique construct. This is an aspect of Jeshi Kahara's film that is easy to underappreciate. He manages to use the conventionally more objective or distanced perspective of cinema to fulfil both qualities simultaneously. Whereas many modernist or surreal films often heighten the general sense of subjectivity, including Jeshi Kahara and Abe's next collaboration, The Face of Another, Woman in the Dunes does not position itself as perennially in line with the entomologist's awareness. Instead, his seeming indifference with the barren landscape on first blush is actually at odds with the audience's perception of it, thanks in particular to the cinematography and experimental musical score. Consequently, the visual spectacle and dread of the opening act is never compromised. Similarly, Tashikahara also prioritises sustaining a palpable sense of physical sensation rather than preserving every element of interior monologue present in the novel. The physical irritation and strain of the sand, the work and the blazing summer sun during the entomologist's first months of confinement, is depicted in unalleviated detail on both a macro and micro level. Although the novel certainly describes the physical nature of the work and toll of this lifestyle throughout, it is compartmentalised, with the narration split up frequently by long passages of interior contemplation. For example, after the entomologist is knocked unconscious, buried by the sand in his failed attempt to climb and dig his way out, the woman nurses him back to health. She offers to wash him, scrubbing him clean with a rag cloth. Teshi Gahara zones in on the micro level of physical experience, as always, with the sustained examination of the points of contact and the nature of the entomologist's skin and sweat. Whereas Abe's description of the scene does briefly elucidate this contact, the scene in its original rendition is not exactly about that. Rather, these actions are simply the context for the entomologist recounting the previous few days' events, devising his next plan of action and speculating on the possibilities of his colleagues searching for him during which it is not at all clear that the woman is still cleaning him until it's finally mentioned again several pages later. The film's incredible unbroken imagery climaxes in a key sequence, a striking and intricately devised sex scene. The entomologist and the unnamed eponymous woman are feeling strangled from the sand as usual, but made worse as they are cut off from water by the villagers as a result of the entomologist refusing to work. The camera examines the ridges of sand grains along their features, matted with their sweat into the texture of their skin, a kind of microcosm of the dunes themselves. Frantic for relief, they attempt to scrub the sand off each other, but failing that desperately attempt to at least distract as much as possible from their present torture by having sex. Teshi Gahara shows them as having blended into a single mass, both with each other and into the sand, whilst the film presents the suffering pair as seemingly successfully transported in a rapture of physicality. The novel frames this scene with a lengthy preamble. The entomologist compares his lust for the woman to previous experiences, 
attempts to deconstruct the psychological implications of male and female sexual cliches, questions his attraction to the woman, and so on. The act itself is almost entirely skipped over, occurring between chapter breaks, in aid of further existentialist musing. Whilst this is arguably the most divergent moment between the novel and the film, it is also emblematic of the competing qualities each version presents, and why the film once again surpasses the novel, at least in its sustained intensity. This scene is one of the film's outstanding examples of the marriage between form and content. The transporting effect of the entomologist's intoxication with the woman's body engulfs the film itself, directing and intensifying its gaze on the couple. Whereas the scene is held at a typical intellectualised and analytical arm's length in the novel, this divergent depiction has substantial implications in later scenes. Implications which enrich the audience's view of the couple's individual motives and their strange relationship, which are not suggested by the novel. In regards to the entomologist's interior monologue, Toshi Kahara could have inserted these interior thoughts into the sequence with some combination of voiceover and flashback. He had chosen to do so earlier in a way that cleverly integrates them without leaving the dunes, so there was even stylistic precedent. But for his film, the sex scene is already a complete embodiment of its pivotal subjects. How do oppressive social systems shape our perception and definitions of individual agency, identity and human impulses? What ultimately dictates these concepts in a modern society? To in some way interrupt with the musings present in the novel would be to dismantle the visceral, primordial, but also poetically ominous effect that resonated strongly with audiences of the film, including many who I'm sure would struggle to vocalise exactly why. This pivotal scene may represent a departure from the novel in its approach and priority of emphasis and interest, but Japanese cinema of this period had well established subversive and relatively explicit images of frantic sexual behaviour, even to the point of rape scenes, as in themselves expressions of social dissociation. Overall, Teshigahara's film is consistently more suggestive of the entomologist's coming transformation, and also quite literally embodies the experience he's going through much better. The choice to never leave the dunes is a pivotal one, as is to never break the tactile, oppressive series of images and heavy atmosphere. The conciseness of premise, narrative, character, and range of visual thematic expressions means by the end audiences can perhaps better relate to the entomologist's experience and instinctually comprehend its disturbing elliptical ending.